la Universitat de Barcelona. We at the University of Barcelona support sexual freedom no matter your gender identity or sexual orientation and this is translated into our regulations and also in our equality plan on which we work on the seventh pillar in this third plan for equality called diversity and intersectionality on gender and therefore we are really happy at the University of Barcelona who are participating on this very much needed struggle and to conclude everyone who has made today possible, especially of Eurom at Eurom and the Solidarity Foundation. We hope you enjoy today, today, this day, sorry, the day. Esperem que pugueu gaudir. We hope that you can enjoy this event, this much needed event, again, with several speakers and several activities that I'm sure that will make it a meaningful day to you all. I ara, now, uh, presentem la senyora Nadja. And now, let's introduce Nadja de Freire, the head of the team for non-discrimination at the DG of Justice, the European Commission. And we will listen to her through this Zoom connection. Thank you. Today we remember the struggles of the LGBTIQ plus communities, and by doing so we put the hours of the past, a past when homosexuality and trans identities were considered a disease, behind us. In the European Union, we are working hard to support all LGBTIQ communities. Two years ago, we adopted the first ever strategy at the European level with actions to mainstream LGBTIQ equality into all policy areas. The goal is for no LGBTIQ person in the EU to feel discriminated against at any point of their life and to be able to be who they are and to love who they want. As we work to improve life in the European Union, I want us to spare a thought for those in an even less fortunate position. We are living in worrying times right now. Violence and violation of human rights have returned to Europe on a larger scale than any time since the, Europe, the World War II. Manifestation of hate and anger remind in most brutal way how important our task of defending the common European values, human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, rule of law, human rights, really is. It's our privilege to live in a society in the EU in which pluralism, non-discrimination, tolerance, justice, solidarity and equality prevail. We must never forget it. It is extremely important that we continue working together for those values in the most determined way. Equality and human rights do not remain and come through on their own. They must be actively cherished. In this very challenging situation, the Commission continues its effort to protect fundamental rights and to fight discrimination by all its means. We follow closely the treatment of vulnerable groups, including LGBTIQ people, who flee the war from Ukraine to the EU. Let me now end with three concrete examples, my own conclusion on what we can learn from history as a policymaker. My first uh, example is the success of the exhibition on gays and lesbians during World War II in the Shoah Memorial in Paris. When extreme power comes into force, all minority groups are at risk. Nowadays, we see that those minority groups are sometimes played against each other. This is not the solution. My first conclusion is that solidarity and intersectionality should prevail. Second, so during our team building, we were lucky enough at the European Commission and my, my team uh, to take part in the lesbian tour in Brussels, organized by an historian who also is an activist in the times when homosexuality was decriminalized in 1985 in Belgium. She says that she received a group of LGBTIQ activists from all over Europe, and that they always astonished to hear that in 20 years' time, Belgium made it possible for LGBTIQ people to marry and have a family, as well as securing rights for trans people. Learning from history, we can clearly see that in the looks for fundamental rights, there are sometimes setbacks, and rights should never be taken for granted, but that they can also go very fast, which is very optimistic for countries now that see a situation that is not favorable for LGBTIQ people. And last but not least, I want to share with you that during a meeting last week with member states, and, and um, Norway informed the commissions that a big part of its new LGBTQ action plan will be based on queer history of the country. So last April, they celebrated the, fifth, the 50th anniversary of the end of criminalization of homosexuality in Norway, 
And at this occasion, the Prime Minister made an official apology to LGBTIQ communities. We do not make policies in a vacuum. History make or shall make policies. I therefore encourage all governments to work closely with university and research institutes to develop the work on the history of the most vulnerable groups and therefore also on the LGBTIQ community. I wish you a very fruitful talk and discussions also during this day. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, now I uh, speak, Dono la paraula, al señor. And now the floor goes to Xavier Florenza, the General Director of Public Policies, LGBTQ, and the Catalan Minister of Equality and Feminism at the Catalan Government. Good morning, everyone. First of all, on behalf of the Catalan Ministry of Equality and Feminism, let me say how happy we are to be part of this opening event on this international meeting, Support and Memories. But also, we would like to thank you for inviting us in being part of this process from this very inception when Oriol Lopez got in touch with us in order to tell us about this project and to bring in people from the LGBTQ movement in the Catalan arena. And so <coughs> let me extend this gratitude to Luisa Jimenez as well, and the head of the LGBTQ uh, division, also all the units in the National Council, some of which will also participate in a panel discussion later on. And there's been a work done in recent months. I would also like to congratulate the University of Barcelona on such an initiative, which is helpful to make visible the struggles of the LGBTQ community through researchers and through activists around Europe that will be here today during this meeting. And also to do so in these very symbolic days, a week before the 28th of June, therefore enriching this whole agenda in Barcelona, but also in Catalonia on that a very special day on the 28th of June, and considering all the different events taking place throughout these days. Sexual orientation, the gender expression of people, and the fact that they do not fit into what's usually seen or been seen as the standard, as the norm, has made that historically, and still is seen in many countries, people in the LGBTQ community have been repressed or have been socially excluded. Worth remembering that the WHO kept homosexuality uh, as a condition until 1990, so that wasn't uh, many years ago. And in the case of trans people, gender dysphoria has been kept until 2018. And even so, to these days, we are seeing legislation that aim uh, trans as a condition. So this is not something that has been overcome for many years, but rather some achievements that are recent in time. Looking back in Catalonia, one can think about the silencing and the prosecution that the LGBTQ community felt under Franco's regime. You remember the social rehabilitation uh, of the during the Franco regime, the uh, law against slackers and crooks that was used against the LGBTQ community to force therapies on them. And that was not just on the community, but also on any uh, on any behavior that was deemed antisocial by Franco's regime. And it was not until 1995 that it was absolutely repealed or the demonstration in Barcelona, the first demonstration in 1977 by the LGBTQ community, the first one that took place in Southern Europe, and that was strongly repressed by the law enforcement agencies, or how some organizations were not le made legal until the early 80s. This all goes to show the need to claim these LGBTQ memories basically on two reasons. First of all, because we as a society need to be fully aware on the challenges in having these rights. Rights should not be taken for granted. It's not something that we get out of the blue. It's been 
some uh, result in outcome of a long, hard struggle. The fact that we now have this Catalan Ministry of Equality and Feminism, 40 years after the comeback of the Catalan government, I think that it's a symbol and it's also an outcome of these struggles by many communities. And also we should be aware on how we need to support these rights considering some people that want these to be rolled back because at the end of the day, the LGBTQ memory is helping us to prevent things from happening again and to revisit some of our darker episodes in our more recent history. As we are seeing in the within the framework of the European Union, such as Hungary or Poland, which are violating the fundamental rights of the LGBTQ community without any further impact other than the political sanctions. But still, some steps are being undertaken, even in these European countries that are against the LGBTQ community. So there is much to be done, and we need to value the historical memory, the democratic memory in the LGBTQ community. I'm sure that there are still many memorials lacking, many memorial spaces in the public environment, and I'm sure that we will be talking about these later on. Also, in the street names of our towns and cities, we are missing references on individuals that are a significant part of the LGBTQ struggle. So I think that this is worth considering, worth being aware of, and hopefully from here on, some additional proposals and additional steps can be put on. Once more, let me thank you for your initiative, and I do hope that you can enjoy this conference. And this is just the first conference of many more to come in order to recover this memory and to claim the struggle for the rights of the LGBTQ community, which is a fight for equality and freedom and human rights. Thank you. Thank you very much the director general and this is with this we will bring this opening part to a close and we will now listen to the keynote speech the monuments to gays and lesbians in europe forms of memory in the public space delivered and first chaired by jordi guichet the director of Eurom. and the Keynote speech will be delivered by Stephanie Endlich, Honorary Professor of Public Art at the University of Arts in Berlin. Thank you very much.